Once was a land of woe and strife Where the people were bereft of hope They prayed to their gods of might and light To deliver the heroes of old Instead they got Heroes, did you hear the quotes in my voice of moral ambiguity? They may help or may not help you at all, depends on what's in it for them. They kick and they punch and they maul and they smash, they lie and they scheme and they burn and they slash. Succeed or fail, it adds to the tale, dungeons and debacles starts now. Hello and welcome everyone to this episode of the Dungeons and Debacles podcast. I'm your host and Dungeon Master, Kevin. Going around the table, Hannah. I'm Hannah. I'll be playing Talia, the human rogue. And Blake. I'm Blake, and I'll be playing Juliet, the dragonborn eldritch fighter slash wizard. And Shane. That's me playing Alexander, the bard and wizard. And Oliver. I am Oliver. I'll be playing Edel Belmont, the Hellsworn paladin. And John. And it's me. Playing Elunidas, Elven Monk. Last time on Dungeons and Debacles podcast, you made your way to the Black Hills outside of Brown Meadow to track down the Amulet of Dominion thief, Cassic Stonefoot. You encountered a beast folk being chased by bees that you thought was your former companion, Vito. But as it turns out, he was a clone named Leto and a brother of Vito's. You learned that Vito and Papa Kasich as Leto calls him, weren't getting along, and Vito left their enclave for Kala, where you met him. Leto leads you back to their cave, where you learn that there are many beast folk Papa Kasich is creating. You finally meet Kasich in his laboratory, and he tells you that he's creating the beast folk for the coming war against Ruin. He becomes very angry when you touch his stuff, and are evasive about why you're in his home. You tell him you're there for the Amulet of Dominion, and he tells you to go fuck yourselves. He touches a bronze disc, and the previously friendly beast folk go into a rage. The battle is on. I I pick up a random object from the table and throw it at Kazik. Uh, Before you could do that, everybody, uh, let's uh, roll initiative. Once again, Juliet has fractional initiative. <laughs> That's actually, uh, I, I was seeing what uh, Blake was talking about uh, to break ties. That's actually pretty handy. Ah. A at one. As uh, he screams that um, and Leto's eyes come aware, you're going to notice that the Tinker Bots um, start moving off the table and jump down. And then from the next year, uh, room, uh, you start to hear the screams and growls of the other beast folk in the larger chamber to the south. Seriously, and they think they're the good guys. <laughs> so first up is uh, Leto. And Leto is going to come charging at uh, the closest one to him, which is Talia. Yay. And he is going to uh, pick up a chair and swing it at you. And that's going to be an 11. Which I'm sure misses. Yes. So he takes the chair and swings it down at your head and you duck out of the way. And the chair splinters into uh, pieces. And now he's holding one of the legs of the chair as a club. Uh, next up is Alexander. That's me. I will. Um, I'll take up my sword and attack. Is K6 still there? K6 uh, right here in the uh, to the left of the fire. Yeah, I go and try and slash him with my long sword. If you move a couple of spaces to the right, then you can get to advantage. That's true. 19. Okay, so as you uh, take a swing at him, uh, you are going to uh, swing down and cut his arm. Uh, roll damage. That's uh, yeah, one. 
Now All that's right. a lot of damage. Uh, next up is these Tinker Bots. So, uh, have you guys seen Puppet Master? Yes. Yeah, a little bit. It's been a while. I remember watching it as a kid, and it freaked me the fuck out. <laughs> yeah, so... I have I was not, like, but... What the fuck? <laughs> so these things Evil are... Dolls is a common trope, so I'm assuming it's something like that. Yeah, so they're kind of, like, set up like that. One's got, like, drill arms and a drill head. Another one's got, like, a like a knife. And, you know, the other one's got, uh, like, a, a nail that it picked up off the, the table that it's using as a weapon. And it is going to turn towards Adel and start uh, climbing his legs and attacking him. So is this kind of like the rat swarm situation? Uh, Not again. Uh, yeah, actually, because I, I kind of based them off the rat swarm. <laughs> well, and we remember how well that worked out for Vito. So let's... Uh... <laughs> Insta-death. So uh, that's a 23. And they critted their damage, so it's going to be six damage. Paul. Um, so these things start climbing up your leg, and uh, they start like drilling and, and stabbing in in between the uh, chain links uh, on your legs. They just start like biting into your legs. Uh, next stop, up. Stop. Next stop, up. Stop. <laughs> next up is Pito. He's going to stop right there. Um, so at this point, uh, you can start hearing people uh, are these beast folk uh, snarling and yelling uh, down the hallway. Uh, next up is Lunadas. Lunadas is going to yell, uh, uh, Talia, grab that coin. And then he's going to run over and try and beat Casey to death. So 19, thanks to advantage. All right, uh, that's going to hit. Okay, for six damage, and then he's going to spend a G point for Flurry of Blows. The first Flurry of Blows is 19 to hit. For five more damage. And then 17. Nice. For eight more. All right, all three hit. So that's a total of 19 damage. Whap, whap, whap. As a reaction, Kasich is going to throw up Shield. Oh, clever. Fucker. Okay. Yep, so that's a plus five, so all three of those are going to miss. Wank, wank, wank. <laughs> so, no damage. Fucker. Okay. And that's a Lunar Dazzy's turn. All right, next up is Adel. I am going to first cast Shield of Faith with a bonus, giving me plus two to AC. Hold the phones, ladies and gentlemen. He cast a spell. Ooh, oh, we did first skip the... Uh, Juliet. Ever. Oh, All right. oh, we did. Now I'm going to use my move action to move five feet. I'm right, going to pick up Kazix. Are you going to try to grapple him? Try and get him over my head. Okay, give me a athletics check. Twelve. All right, so um, you go to grapple him, and uh, he is going to squirm out of your fingers. Bastard. So is that in your turn? I think so. Uh, can I use some more of my move action? Uh, you can. All right, let's go, like, right. That would give two attacks of opportunity against you. Mind if I go around like this? True. Yeah, that just one. one. Yeah. You can try and hit me. Why is Kasich not in this turn order for some reason? Feels bad. He's 16. Yeah, he is. He's at the very bottom. He wasn't added before, though. That's weird. Oh, oh gotcha. So, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to let... Uh, Juliet, what did you have? You had a... Eight eight eight. Okay, so I'm going to let Kasich go first, and then I'm going to put sure. you in the tw turn order next. So, Kasich, let's see what you can do. He's going to attack with his tiny little fists. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah? <laughs> the first thing that he is going to do is cast Thunderwave. Shit. Thunderwave is like one of the best cantrips in the game. <laughs> 
Are you sure? I uh, have it on my spell list. Okay, uh, I'm going to need everybody to give me a constitution save. Alright. Alright, five. I'm totally Eight. Eight. that one. Eat my ass. Alright, so uh, everyone but Juliet is going to take eight damage and you're all going to be pushed uh, ten feet and you are all prone. And it's directly away from him, correct? Yes. Keep that in mind, people. How much damage was that, by the way? Eight. Got it, thank you. Wait, why am I pushed? Oh no, he moved. Oh, you didn't say. Oh, you saved. Yeah, guys. Sorry about that. So, uh, so the next thing, um, so he cast Thunder Wave, and as uh, where did Talia end up? Top of this room. Yeah, she got pushed into a table. So um, <laughs> he casts Thunder Wave, and he yells, "Get away from me!" And then he is going to take a vial that is at his hip, and he is going to throw it at Juliet. And I'm going to need you to give me a Dex save. Gotcha. We're saved. Eleven. All right, you are going to take uh, thirteen points of acid damage, and uh, I think you take uh, half damage on the thunder wave too, as well, right? Uh, I took half damage on the thunder wave, not on the potion. Right, you'll take full damage on that. Yep. All right. Next up uh, is Juliet. All right. Bonus action. Can use second wind to heal up. So that's way. That's so much burst. Uh, so that'll heal me for four points of damage as a bonus action. Then Juliet is going to make an attack with our halberd. Are the 17. Uh, that's going to miss. All right. Because shields up until the... Well, no, it would have gone down because his, uh, his turn ended. So that will actually hit. No, no, but he cast it past his turn of 16. It would still go and be active even after me. Uh, okay, I got you. Alright, yeah. so that's a miss. Uh, and then Juliet's going to use Action Surge for an extra action. And she is going to cast where's that? Tasha's Hideous Laughter on him. <laughs> Throw that down. It's a DC 12 check. Uh, wisdom. Uh, he passes. Alright, that's the end of Juliet's turn then. Uh, um, go ahead, I'm sorry. Oh no, I was just going to ask where the Tinker Bards actually are. Are they still on Adel, or are they there? Uh, they're right there beside you. Okay. I am going to stand up. Which, is that a bonus action or an action? That's, uh, half, half, half your movement. movement. Oh, half, half my movement? Okay. I'm going to disengage as a bonus action, which, if I'm reading it correctly, means that yep. I, um, don't have to, I, I don't, they don't get a, an attack of opportunity. Correct. Can I hide behind these tables over here? Uh, you could hide underneath one, yeah. I'm gonna get under that table and cast Mage Armor on myself. Okay. So that's your bonus, your move, and your action. Yep. Alright, next up is Rito. So he's gonna move up here uh, to the intersection of the cave, uh, followed by Gito. And then next up is Leto who is going to stand up and snarl at Juliet. Come over here to attack Juliet uh, with his uh, club. It's a 21. I don't even need advantage for that, so that's going to be 6 damage. Ouch. Uh, next up is Alexander. That's me. I'm just checking something real quick. I will uh, use my movement action to stand up from being prone. Use my bonus action to change to a crossbow, and then uh, use my standard action to fire at Kassik. What kind of wizard are you? Nine to hit. Uh, that's going to miss? I would think. Uh, did you use your bonus action for something? What, me? Yes. He switched to his crossbow. Uh, okay. Okay, because I had my long sword at the beginning. All right. Next up is the Tinker Bots. So the Tinker Bots uh, saw Talia 
go over here underneath the desk and they're like, oh yeah, down to our level. So they're going to march over here and attack uh, Talia. It's a 17. How much? 17. What's your AC? Uh, right now, I believe it's 16, so... Okay, that's going to hit for 6 damage. Did uh, I'm, it, I'm just moving her to... Did your AC increase with Mage Armor? You just cast it. It did. Okay. Alright, so... Um, they come over and you're kind of like uh, hunched under the desk and they come over and start climbing up your uh, your arms and your cloak and start stabbing at your uh, arms and your face. Uh, next up is Twerps. Pito. Water elementals are jerks. It's not the water el- I mean, water elementals don't kill people. It's people that kill people. Or people that command <laughs> water elementals kill people. <laughs> But it'd be harder to kill somebody if they didn't have those water elementals, correct? We well, wouldn't have this trouble if he had to have a three-day waiting period on those water exactly. elementals. Right, guys, cool let's down. This into the thigh commercial. <laughs> 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 All right, Olenidas, you're up. Okay, he's going to stand up, and he's going to try that uh, uh, beating the person to death thing again. What's your uh, movement? Uh, nine. So... He'd have more than enough to get okay. the two spaces back to the fire. All right, that's a uh, thirteen. Yeah, that's, that's gonna, miss. gonna miss. And that's it for this. All right, next up is Kasich. What am I gonna do to you? So uh, he takes those swings at you, and he is going to turn around and cast blind at you. So uh, Alunidas, so I'm gonna need a con save. DC 15. Balls. Yep, so uh, you are now blind. Uh, each turn you have disadvantage on attacks and advantage of on uh, attacks against you uh, and any skill that requires uh, sight. Auto fails. Alright, so now that you are blind, I think that's going to be it for Kasich's turn. Next up is Juliet. Fantastic. As far as I can tell, his shield is down this time, right? Uh, correct. Alright, time to take a swing. And hope I can waste all the spell shots. Go, Halbert. Yeah, 23. That's gonna hit. For 10 slashing damage. So, uh, he's got his back to you, and he cast, uh, Blind on Alunidas, and you see Alunidas' uh, eyes go white. And around that time, you take your halberd and slash down and cut into his back. Next up is Adel. One sec, I'm looking up a spell thingy real quick. God damn it, though, you have it on your sheet. Uh, I have it in my folder, and it's my channel divinity. You can add put your charisma modifier to your attack for... But you can only do it one, once a day, and you've already used your channel divinity. When you... Uh, when? In that chamber as you were walking in when you um, um, yeah I was heard prepping, some prepping it uh, I thought you said you already used it I did use it but that's part of it you like it like makes your sword light up and then when you like you can activate it it's like imagine charging up something and then you can use it yeah but that only lasts for one minute it that's the casting time I believe no that's the duration I are you sure pretty sure pretty sure I read it yesterday. Channel Divinity. Uh, as an action, you can read the weapon that you have uh, holding in the fires of hell with your Channel Divinity for one minute. You add your Charisma modifier and the fire damage to uh, attacks from that weapon. Uh, minimum bonus of one. So it lasts for one minute. It says nothing about preparing it. Oh, I thought I had to prepare it. Nope. That makes things a lot easier. I'll let you go ahead and do it just to get this moving, though. Alright. Four, five, six. So that hits all of them in a row. Um, so you moved... You were originally right here, correct? Or where were you? He was on top of the table. Yeah. So that's one, two, three. I'm at the most speed I can go. Okay, so you went from here to here, correct? So you're going to take an attack of an opportunity from Leto. 
Fair enough. Remember, I have 2080 uh, C from Shield of Faith. Yeah, that's a nine. That'll miss. So you're going to unleash uh, your ch channel of divinity. Correct. Okay, so you'll have hit. To make dexterity saving throws now, I believe. Yep. So you'll hit Leto, Juliet, and Kasich and Alim. Um, I think he's going for the three in the hallway. Oh, yeah, the three I in the am. hallway. <laughs> Forgot that they were there. Okay. Yeah, I, I believe I I have them all lined up. Uh, what's the range on that? 60 feet. All right. So what's the DC? 12? Uh, it's my spell save, correct? Yes. Yeah, 12. And it's a deck save. So first one fails, uh, second one passes, and the third one fails. So what's your damage? I need to roll 40. Whoa, 20 damage. Okay, so... And half as much if they succeed. So... 10 or 20. And I believe they are not prone if they fail it. Alright, so Adel is going to uh, hold his sword over his head and you see it start uh, to burst into fire and then he swings it down into the ground and this uh, wave of uh, fire floods this hallway and is going to light these things up. Um, so you see the first one and the third one uh, are like on the ground like in flames and the one in the middle uh, the one in the middle Pito is uh, dancing around on fire hell yeah dance monkeys dance alright uh, next up is Talia time for some backstab um, um, I am going to cast poison spray on the tinkerbot okay all right, so uh, you cast Poison Spray, and then you remember that these aren't living things, and Poison doesn't do anything to mechanical... What? ...constructs. It's hard to poison not something when little... it doesn't have an immune system. <laughs> not, not even... I knew I should have taken Acid Spray. Um, I'm going to then uh, disengage as my bonus action and run over here. Okay. Next up is Rito. So uh, Rito is on fire and is going to stand up and, and not uh, go charge anywhere. down this hallway. So that's half his movement. Well, no, not much of it. So that's half his movement. So he's going to get there. Uh, next up is Gito that has to stand up as well. And is going to move over here. Is going to move over here by uh, Adel, and is going to attack with a longsword. So that's a 14. That's going to miss. Uh, next up is Leto, who is going to attack uh, Juliet. That's a 19. That does it uh, for eight damage. So Juliet had taken a, a swing down into a case and sliced his back and. As that happens, Leto comes up uh, behind Juliet and smacks her in the back of the head uh, with this chair leg. Uh, next up is Alexander. I will. Well, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I'm going to just keep on shooting Kasich with my fucking crossbow. 20 to hit. Uh, that will hit. Six damage. Do you have any bardic inspiration? I do. He's got three Kasich. of them. Uh, I just Julia is getting uh, smacked around. I use my bonus action to uh, inspire somebody, right? Yep. yep. Like, is there anything I have to do, or do I just say, like. You have a, to sing me a song. The song of my people. Uh, I will barter. Juliet worked on the docks, down on her luck. She brought home her pay for love. Yeah, that's, that's pretty that's, neat. That's pretty much our theme song now, I guess. All right, so Juliet, you get inspired. Uh, well, actually, that's not going to work because Juliet, don't you already have an inspiration? Well, what do you mean? I have I have the regular game inspiration, but bardic inspiration is different. Oh, uh, I didn't think that that stacked. Oh, I don't know if it does. Maybe it doesn't. Because the rule says you, you can only have one inspiration at a time. All right, yeah, then put it on someone else. 
tell you could probably use it either that or Lunados for the save he's got coming up. Yeah. Because I think uh, Lunados and Shane are the only two people that don't have inspiration at this point. I don't think I do either. Uh, I think you should because you named your horse yeah. the last time. Oh, that's right. So, Shane, you giving that inspiration to Talia? Uh, sure. All right. So, next up are the Tinker Bots. So, the Tinker Bots are going to see that the little girl ran away, and they turn around and see Adel right there beside him in the hallway. So, they're going to move down here and flank it, uh, Adel. Yeah. And they start climbing your legs again. And the first attack is an 8, but the uh, advantage attack is a 20. So that's going to do 6 damage to you. But I have a 22, well I have a 20. Yep, so if it meets, it beats. Got me dear. How much damage? Uh, 6. Next up is Pito. So Pito's kind of stuck right here, because he can't get past uh, Gito. Uh, next up is Lunados. All right, so blind means until the end of my turn, I have yeah. disadvantage. Yeah, so uh, you're currently blind. You can make an attack at a disadvantage, and then you can make a constitution save at the end of your turn. Okay, but Kasich's still flanked. So does, does the advantage and disadvantage cancel? Correct. All right. So Lunados is going to go ahead and attack. 23. That's a hit. Okay, and then he's going to go ahead and spend the cheat point to uh, do Flurry of Blows again. Oh, I don't know if crits work on Flurry of Blows, but he got a crit on one of those. Yeah, they're just regular oh, like, attacks. They still work? It would, but okay. as a reaction, Kasich is going to cast Shield again. Uh, you might want to do that because a natural 20 will still hit. Right, but the he won't take the other two. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Okay, and now, because one of those did hit... Um... Well, actually, no. All three of those are going to hit regardless of whether or not he's got shield up or not. Okay. It's only going to boost his uh, AC to 20. So, all three hit. Okay. Um, and because the flurry of blows hit, um, go ahead and say that he is... And get no reactions until the end of my next turn. Okay. Oh, nice. So let's do your total damage first. All right. Six plus eight plus five is 19. And uh, that eight doubles because it's crit, right? Well, no, um, that's already taking into account the crit. It's seven. Uh, okay. So what was the total again? Uh, 14 plus five is 19. All right. Now let's roll the roll me a d20. Ooh, I forgot about that. Four. All right, so uh, that's hamstring. The target is slowed to half movement until the end of the encounter. Deck save ends DC 10. All right. And now I can use that inspiration to get advantage on this con save? Uh, yes, you can. All right, then. I'm well, in. it's not advantage. It's uh, you roll a D6, and you can add that to your number. But you can say if if you already roll over it, so that's a twelve. Uh, so um, you can either use your inspiration die or stick with that number. But you have to call it before I tell you if it succeeds or not. I am going to stick with it. Okay, so uh, you fell that safe, and that ends Lunadas's turn. All right, next up is Kasich. So Kasich is not happy right now. Especially that uh, you just uh, basically beat the shit out of him. Well, he deserves it. For making evil dolls. So he is going to pull out... Um, well, first of all, he is going to cast... Uh, Magic Missile, and that is going to hit, he's going to cast two at uh, Alunidas, and one at uh, Juliet. Alunidas, you are going to take uh, 
nine points of damage. And Juliet, you're going to take three points of damage. All right. And then as a bonus action, he is going to throw a, a, a vial at Alunidas. So, uh, Lunidas, give me a, a deck save. 20. All right, so you uh, aren't going to take any damage um, from this uh, vial. He's going to throw this vial, and it's going to go past your head and explode into a fire, and then there's this huge fireball. That's what you get for throwing something at him up, bitch. <laughs> um, next up is Juliet. Okay. Uh, Juliet's going to spit out some blood and take another swing with the halberd. Why not? And 18. Uh, that's going to hit. We'll take nine slashing damage, and that'll be the end of the turn. All right. Next up is Adel. I am going to swing at this doggo. In- Tickerbots, Tickerbots, go for the dogs. If that does not hit, I'm going to use my inspiration to get advantage. Uh, who are you swinging at? The doggo in front of me. Uh, Gato. Yeah, I can't see his name because there's a big old block of black. Oh, hold on. Hey, that's better. Okay, uh, so you take a swing at this uh, beast folk in the hallway staring you down, and you are going to find nothing but air. Inspiration! Uh, I already told you the result, so you can't use the dice. Oh, I didn't know that's how it worked. Yep. Damn it. Uh, Talia, you're up. Alright, I am going to use my bonus... Well, okay. I'm going to use my hood. I'm going to put my hood up. Since it looks like nobody's really paying attention to me and hope that it kind of shields or covers my movements. I'm going to use my bonus action to dash to here. And um, then I'm going to uh, do a sneak attack. Uh, putting your hood up actually takes an action in the description of the cloak. Right, it takes an action. I use my bonus action to dash. Right, but it takes an action to pull the hood up. Oh, so I don't get to attack. So you Got can it. move there. You just won't be able to attack. Um, in that case, because I misunderstood my own stuff, that was my fault. Um, I am going to instead use my action to cast <sighs> or you could just move up there and attack him yeah you'll have advantage regardless uh okay, she won't have that. advantage no not special. advantage sorry but you can sneak attack which makes you damage you are like wow okay so I will sneak attack with my daggers I guess alright that's, oh, that's a 18 that'll hit and then that is plus 1d6 so that's six damage, and then roll a d6. Two, so eight damage. All right, so Talia comes uh, crawling up under, out underneath his table and sees that uh, Cassock has uh, his side to her and then sneaks up beside him and just stabs him in the side. As a result of that, Cassock is going to uh, use Healing Draught Draught, healing draught, or draft, draught, draft, healing draught, and is going to get back 18 hit points. Uh, sneak attack at level 3 or 4 is 2d6 extra damage. And you should really find me another dagger and uh, attack uh, with two daggers. I thought I had two daggers. That would be two attacks then. That's what oh. Did you already use your bonus action then? I have not used a bonus action, no. Okay, there you go. Then uh, you can attack, and then uh, you just have to subtract your dexterity bonus, I think, from... Or no, your proficiency bonus. So it'd be whatever you roll minus two would be your offhand attack. So that would be a 13. That's going to miss. No, no, no. It cancels out the damage. The attack die is still the same. I thought the proficiency didn't get added to the second attack. Mm, the strength doesn't, or strength or dexterity doesn't get added to the damage, I believe. 
But also, wasn't uh, Kassik not allowed to use reaction things because of Abel's attack? Oh, yeah. Forgot about that. So he doesn't get to react to that. Thank the gods. <laughs> nice. Good catch. You can make a bonus action only when using the otherwise blah blah blah. When you take an attack action, attack with a light melee weapon you're holding in one hand. You can use a bonus action to attack with a different light melee weapon if you're holding in the other hand. You don't add your ability modifier to the damage of the bonus attack unless the modifier is negative. Alright, so it doesn't get added to the damage. So that would be three piercing? Yes. All right, so uh, Talia uh, pokes uh, Kassik in the side, and you see Kassik go to, uh, like, one knee and clutch his side, and then turns around and looks at uh, Talia, and he's like, Ah, little girl! And then next up is Rito, who can only move up to there. Uh, Gito is going to attack Adel. Uh, that's a 12 that's going to miss. He is going to move into the room so he's going to um, attack Adel and then slide by him into the room uh, Adel you can take an opportunity attack I will, I'm going to aim for his legs there we go so that's a hit roll damage so uh, that's a 13 as uh, Gito uh, w- takes a swing at Adel and runs into the room to protect uh, Kasich Adel is going to do like that uh, did you ever see that episode of Firefly where Malcolm Reynolds is having a duel, uh, that guy with a sword and the guy like takes the sword kind of like behind his back and pokes him in the side <laughs> that's uh, a forever since I've watched Firefly man yeah so Adel, uh, Adel gets uh, Gato and as he's running into the room uh, he is going to hit a sensitive spot and Gato is going to fall down dead Hell yeah, hit an artery. Man. Uh, so next up is Leto, who is going to take a swing at Juliet with his club. Ooh, that is a crit. So that's going to be 12 damage. And that's a disarming strike. Uh, so Juliet, you're going to drop your weapon and you must use all of your move action to pick it up on next turn. Uh, if the tar- target is a magic user, which this applies to you too, uh, you may only use a standard action for the round. Okay. So next up is Alexander. Uh, I will. You might want to, like, throw a healing word or something, Juliet's way. <laughs> Sure. Because you see Leto like uh, hit Juliet in the back of the head, and Juliet's gonna like, you know, like stagger and like catch herself with uh, her halberd. So she's looking pretty rough. Seems a good healing word. I'm just looking up how many dice it. I think that was D8. For what healing uh, word? Ignore that. Sorry. Four plus spell casting ability modifier. I'm just checking to see if I can use a level 2 spell slot for it. Okay, yep. Yeah, I'll use a level 2 uh, spell slot to cast Healing Word on Juliet. So it'll be 2d4 healing plus my spell casting modifier, which is 4, I believe, because it's charisma. So how much is that total? 6? Uh, oh, don't you have to roll first? <laughs> yeah, I have to. So, 10 health. Sweet, thank you. And then that was my bonus action, so I still get a move and a uh, standard. And I will shoot my old crossbow at the gold, old Cassock. Crit. Wow. Nice. Alright, so go ahead and uh, do your damage first. Five damage for the base. Uh, do you just want me to roll again for the double damage portion? Uh, yeah. Uh. So eleven damage with the extra one added in, and then now roll the one d twenty four effects. Okay. Seventeen. Uh, attacker gets combat advantage on next turn. So next turn you're going to get advantage on Casey. Got it. If Kasich's still alive. 
Uh, next up is the Taker Bots. They are still um, climbing ever further up uh, Adel's inseam and stabbing along the way. Uh, that's going to be a 14. Uh, that's not going to get through uh, the leather that you're wearing as pants. Uh, next up is Pito, who's going to run up here and attack uh, Adel. And he's going to basically do the same thing. He's trying to get into this room, so he is going to take a swing at Adel and then try to run into the chamber. Uh, that's 11. That's going to gonna miss. Do I take my opportunity to attack? Did you already uh, take Yeah, go ahead and take your opportunity attack. I got 11. Uh, that's going to miss. Damn. All right, uh, Lunadosh, you're up. Okay, time to see if we can't... Uh kill this guy. Yeah, let's go ahead and just swing at this guy, try to kill him. That's an 18 to hit. Alright, that's going to hit. And... And we're going to... Oh, we'll just go ahead and leave it at that. So, 7 damage. Alright, so you smack Kasich in the in the, uh, the chest with... Uh, your quarterstaff, and he staggers back a little bit, but uh, he's still up. Okay, now to roll for that concept. And I'm not going to spend my inspiration on that. <laughs> that's a crit. Um, so you are no longer blinded. And that's my turn. Okay, so uh, next up is Kasich. The reaction thing, that was did that end at the beginning of your turn? That ended. Yeah. At the end of the beginning. Uh, hold on. End. Okay, so he would not have been able to react to it if it was the end of your turn. Correct. Alright, so he, Kasich is back in the situation that he was in before being surrounded by you creeps. So he hey. is going to cast uh, Thunder Wave again. And everybody needs to give me, well, uh, Alinidas, Talia, Peto, Leto, and Juliet all they need to give me con saves. Oh, I failed. Wait, you haven't told me that yet. Nah, I'm not going to waste it. <laughs> yeah, that, that was a crit fail. Oh, wait. I'm, I'm, I'm going to use mine. You're going to use your inspiration? I Have am. Have you rolled yet? Oh, yeah, yeah I, I rolled a nine. Okay, but uh, you haven't told. Ooh, six. That was exactly what you needed. <laughs> All right, so everybody except for Hannah and Juliet are going to take uh, six damage and be pushed uh, ten feet in your prone. And we take three. Yep. All right, and as a bonus action, he is going to do healing draft. And get back 19. <laughs> all right, Juliet, you're up. All right. So I have to use all my movement to pick up the weapon, right? Correct. So you'll you'll only get a standard action. So you can attack. Okay. But why attack when you can be a dick? Force rolls over and over. Uh, Juliet's going to cast Tasha's Hideous Laughter again. DC 12, Wisdom Seed. Uh, he critted. All right, that is the end of Julia's turn. All right, Adel, you're up. I am going. Wait, how did he get in the wall? He got pushed. Oh, all right. Oh, there, there you go. I'm gonna hit Leto. I'm gonna use my inspiration. Well, you don't have to use it yet. Wait till you roll. Yeah, you look at your roll and then you decide whether you want to use it. Oh, okay. I don't want to use it. I okay, don't think that so. hits. 14 damage. Nice. I'm going to I'm gonna also go ahead and use a spell slot and then do one extra bit of 2d8. I'm going to have it be necrotic damage. Okay. That's a 15 necrotic damage. Alright. So, uh, what's it look like when you uh, kill Leto? I come, I, I raise my sword and it starts to cackle with black energy 
and then I come down and slash him, and he, it just starts to disintegrate and eat him away at his flesh, and then he collapses into the ground and dead. You don't even feel like a little bit bad? Leto was so nice to you before. Nah, I tried to fuck with my steez. <laughs> Alright, Talia, cool, you're up. Lito. Um, I'm looking up the ranked firebolt that I have. Firebolt is 1d10. Uh, it's an attack roll. It uses your spellcasting modifier to fire off. I am going to do that. I'm going to use a charge on my on my ring of fire uh, ring of firebolt, and I have not pro- programmed that in. So, what do I need to roll? Uh, just a d20 plus your spellcasting modifier or the staffs, depending whatever it is. The so it'd be a d20 plus whatever that spellcasting modif- attack modifier is. So that was that. So your spell attack bonus is four, so it'd be d20 plus four. Oh. So it's a 15. Yeah. So that'll hit. Roll your uh, damage. I actually don't know what damage it does, because the thing it's I It's a 1d10. On. 1d10, thank you. My apologies. You're not so sorry. Don't lie. Uh, so that's eight damage. So uh, you pop off uh, a charge out of this ring, and uh, Kasich, uh, he's ar- already kind of looking at you because you stabbed him in the side before, and uh, the uh, flame bolt smacks into his arm, and he starts uh, trying to put it out with his hand. He snarls at you. Uh, Rito's up next, and he's going to charge at Adel. And try to do the same thing, trying to get into the room to uh, protect uh, Kasich. So first he's going to take his swing at you with a short sword. Uh, that's going to miss. He makes it this far into the room and you get a attack of opportunity, Adel. Alright, cool. Kill him to death. Damn it. Not like that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use my inspiration. <laughs> okay. Roll a d6. Oh, I roll a D. Yeah, the inspiration lets you add a D six to a die roll, right? Oh, I thought yes. I thought it gives you advantage or just lets you re-roll something. Nope. All right. So eight, nine, ten, eleven. Uh, that's gonna miss. Uh, next up is Alexander. That's me. You have advantage. You're gonna kill him, possibly. Nineteen to hit. Uh, who are you shooting at? Classic. Uh, that's a hit. Roll again, you might get a crit. Three damage. Yeah, I did the second roll already. Oh, I see. Yeah. Uh, so three damage. Uh, next up is the Tinker Bots, uh, who are still all over Adel. Uh, that's a 23 for eight damage. Damn. Uh, next up is Pito. He's going to run over here behind Talia and take his swing. That's a crit. No. I hate him so much right now. Um, so that's going to be five damage. And on the crit table, uh, you that's fleet of foot. Uh, you would quickly attack your opponent and can shift up to your movement, even if you've already used your move action. If another creature is within... Uh, your movement, you can take a basic melee attack on that creature. Oh, nice. So he's going to attack Talia and then swing down here to Juliet and swing at her. I'm going to cast shield. Oh my god, that's another crit. Another crit? Doesn't even matter. Okay, then. <laughs> <laughs> Wasted all my slots. No problem. I'm pretty sure I'm down. Uh, that's going to be five damage. Really? On a crit? Holy shit. Yeah, the, the first damage was... Oh, actually, no, I didn't add the uh, damage modifier. Yeah, that's what I thought. Uh, yeah, so that's uh, ten damage. So that's going to take uh, you down. Then I'm down. Your attack hits... Uh, that's a haymaker. Your attack hits so hard it stuns your opponent until the end of your next turn, which doesn't matter because you're down. Yep. Uh, Linodos, you're up. Okay, now I'm getting annoyed. Slightly. And Dust is going to stand up. He's moving over here to flank Kasich again. 
And he's going to attack really hard. Uh, that's a 10. That's going to miss. No, it's got advantage, so it's oh. a 24. Okay, so that hits. Okay. Um, yeah, he's going to go ahead and do Furry of Blows. Well, what, it, what just oh, happened? Oh, sorry. I, I, didn't, I couldn't see the thing. I didn't realize it was just going and going and going. Okay, so walk me through this here. So the first one is a crit, and then the second one is a 20. Yes, sorry about that. Okay. So it's a total of 12 more damage. So a total of 20 damage that turn. Um, uh, roll the crit so table. I'm thinking that he's 15. Uh, disarming strike, uh, the target drops the weapon, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, yeah, I'm thinking that I just, you know, just pump, pump him, basically. He's a, he's a meat sack. Yeah, so you want to describe to me how you take Kasich down? Um, let's see. I can come up with something new for the, uh... No, no, he's just going to hit him in the back of the head so hard that his eye bulge. Well, one eye bulges, like, a whole lot. Really gross looking. The other one pops right out and dangles. Oh, he's... That's gross. Yeah. All right. So, uh, Juliet, give me a death saving throw. I was going to ask if I can use my inspiration on it. We have to be conscious to do so. Yep. 16. There we go. All right. That's uh, one save. Adel, you're up. Uh, I'm going to walk over here. Actually, can I do a charge action? Yeah, you can do that. Uh, you have to be more than one square away, so you'd have to back up and then... Oh, yeah, that's true. I'll do that. And I think uh, charge only gives you what uh, plus one to hit. No, you... charge attack means you can either push them up to ten feet or knock them prone with your attack. It's no damage, unfortunately. Yeah, and I don't know that you can knock a swarm prone. No, no, no. They're they're all over me, so I'm not really concerned about them. They're like all over my body, so. You also can't end your turn um, in someone's. An enemy's square. But can't they occupy my square and vice versa? Because they're a swarm? That that's more flavor than anything else. Alright, I guess I'll just go over here and get the flank going and attack Rito. Okay. Wait. Nat Juliet's twenty. Dead. Okay, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's ten damage. And again. Uh and then I'll and then I believe I rolled a crit table, and then I rolled double damage, correct? Uh, roll your damage first, so roll, roll your damage twice. Boo! <laughs> so, 30... The second time should be without the modifier. Plus yeah. Five. yeah. Uh, it's still 16. That's still yeah, so 26 damage. total. Okay, so what's it look like uh, when you take this uh, uh, Rito down? So I slash him at the back of his knee and then pop him with the back of my blade to get him completely on his knees and then I decapitate him. Talia, you're up. Um, since Kasich is dead, right? Correct. And uh, I'm going to use my bonus ac action to disengage. Go over here and see if I can find the stone that he was holding, or the, the coin that he was holding that controlled all of his little beings. Uh, okay. Um, give me a investi- uh, give me an uh, investigation check. Um, you're not seeing it. It's not on the floor or around him anywhere. Well, alright then. I guess that was my turn. Uh, next up is Alexander. That's me. Just, just gunning him down. Let's try and kill Pito. Twenty-one to. Uh, that's a hit. How many people have I killed? Several. Yeah, I've killed like I think four or three. I think you killed all but one of the beastmen. So, Pito, Rito, Lito, Gito. I have not killed Pito yet. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, your crossbow bolt uh, whizzes past uh, Talia's head as she is uh, down on the ground, uh, rifling through uh, um, Cassock stuff and smacks Pito in the chest. 
Uh, next up is the Tinkerbots, who have not even been touched yet. They are going... They love Adel. You're their best friend. Ah, uh, they have a weird <laughs> definition of friend. And it's because you're always drinking, and they, they sense that affinity. <laughs> so, uh, that's a 16 they're going to miss. Uh, next up is Pito, who is going to see that uh, Talia is molesting Kasich. Molesting. Wow. Or rifling through his pockets. So Molesting's a rough choice of words. <laughs> it has multiple meanings. It's true. Yeah, but most people see it as one thing. <laughs> <laughs> In Spanish and Portuguese, it just means bother. Oh, really? Great. Bo well, yeah, that makes sense. I can, I can see that. <laughs> All right, so uh, Pito is going to take a swing at Talia as she's searching through uh, Kasich stuff. Uh, that's going to be a 16. Um, misses. My mage armor it lasts for eight hours. And what's your current AC? Uh, if I've done my math correctly, it should be 18. Okay. All right, next up is Linardos. Don't you fuck with Talia. He's going to attack Pito with advantage. Never attack the adorable sidekick. Always attack the adorable sidekick. Uh, so 17 hit. to hit for nine damage. So uh, is that you jump that over, uh, you jump over Juliet and Kasich's bodies, and then uh, Pito sees you like running around, but he's like too slow and just like sees you dart around him and he's like oh so he's behind me now and then you smack him uh Juliet give me a death saving throw hey nat 20 oh shit alright so with a nat 20 on death saving throws I think that automatically stabilizes you yeah you yep. get one HP and then I believe you uh, get two successful death saves which automatically makes you succeed Yep. All right, Adel, you're up. Cool. Mm. So first, the Taker bots are going to get an attack of opportunity. If you move, are you going uh, after Pito? I think. Yeah, go go with this one. I kind of want to. I think kill, we had this like discussion kill. before, but uh, did uh. Did can can I use like smites on ranged attacks? Uh, no, smites for melee, unfortunately. I think sure. it says mace specifically or something. Yeah, mace. It, it's melee weapon only. Ah, oh, that'd be so fun though. Technically, if you had a throwing melee weapon, you could probably use it there. I feel like that would be a weird technicality. You'd have to like talk to the G DM about that. Um, I think I'll just attack the swarm. Yeah, they haven't taken any damage at all. Yeah. So, I'm gonna make an attack. Seven! Uh, that's gonna miss. Alright, uh... Hmm. Hmm, I think that's all I can do. Yeah, pretty much. Alright, next up is Talia. I'm going to turn around and attack uh, Pito. So that is a crit fail. No, it's 13. Oh, no, it's not a 13. It's advantage. Uh, that's going to miss. And with my offhand. Much that will hit. For two piercing damage. Woo! All right, you want to do your sneak, sneak attack. attack on there. What? You can throw a sneak attack damage on there. Oh, can I? I'm within five feet of him, so yeah. Or, yeah, five feet. Actually, it would be advantage that would uh, determine that in this one because she's not technically within five feet of her. So that's uh, what was that? Two d eight sneak attack damage at this level. Two d six. All right. So uh, Talia, what's it look like when you take uh, Pedo down? Oh, I'm so happy. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I'm so happy I get to murder something. <laughs> um, I am going to. Uh since I'm so short, basically, I'm just going to disembowel him 
from from one side of his gut to the other, and his guts will spill out, and he's gonna die a horrible death. It's cold blooded. I like it. Keep it's it up. Cold blooded. Check it and see. So you do that thing. All right, Alexander, you you are up. That's me. I am going to use acid throw on the box. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> Is that going to hit me? No, it shouldn't. I don't think that has a splash damage component, does it? No. I'm pretty sure it does. What is this again? Acid splash. Uh, I have a feeling it like hits a second target, perhaps? Yeah, I, it, but I it's can AoE a technically. second target within range. Yeah, it doesn't have like, um, like an AoE. It's if he wants it to do damage, he can make it do that, yeah? That's what it sounds like. Keel. Yeah, but uh, I'll use Acid Splash on the bots. Uh, instantaneous, or a thing of acid. I roll 1d6 acid damage, and they have to pass a deck save. Again, uh, against the DC of 12. Uh, deck save, did you say? Yes. Yep. Uh, they fell. Nice. I'll go and roll. Three damage. I don't know if we can take that. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, Taker bots are up. They are going to attack Adel again. Because they just love him so much. You're like, hey, buddy. What you doing up there? Gonna stab you a little bit. (laughs) (laughs) So, uh, that's uh, 15. That's gonna miss. And Alunidash, you're up. Oh, by the way, uh, Adel, what's the... uh, Duration on your shield of faith? One minute, which is about ten rounds. That's uh, six rounds, so I'd say you've probably lost that at this point. What you talking about? One minute is six rounds. Isn't like ten rounds because each round is six seconds. I thought each round was like two I, seconds. I think each it's- attack a person makes is six seconds, which they just uh their each turn is six seconds. So they just average so- it out, say one round is a minute. So your AC would be 18 at this point. Because we're way past six rounds. What are we currently at? Uh, we're probably at like uh, nine or so. Because I know you've killed at least three be- beast folk. So that's three rounds there. It's 54. I got one more round in me. <laughs> yeah, out of town. Uh, anyway. Hell yeah. Uh, Alunidas comes in and gets a crit hit on the tanker bots. All right. Oh, yeah. What's your uh, damage? Uh, sixteen. All right, and that's uh, bludgeoning, right? Yes. All right. Uh, next up is Juliet. Uh, it was a crit hit. He rolled seventeen on the table. I don't know what that might do. I oh, am I'm sorry. Stable and can't do anything. Uh, seventeen. Uh, attacker gets combat advantage on next turn. Well, would have had that anyway. <laughs> So, uh, I think you've got one hit point at this point, since you rolled a 20, so you'd be able to get up. Gotcha. Where's your character? It's a white thing to the left of Kazik. Ah. And? Um, yeah, so... Go ahead, I'm sorry. Like, uh, next turn I can, like, <laughs> probably run up and heal you. That's okay, I don't need any healing, because combat's gonna be over. I... Where the hell, where the hell are those little guys? I can't see them. They're In between me and Abel. Oh, I see him. Okay, thank you. Uh, Juliet is going to use the range of her pole arm, which I completely forgot to do, and take a stab at these guys. God damn, I'm an idiot. A 23 to hit. Uh, that's going to hit. And that's 13 piercing damage. All right, next up is Adel. Kill. I... Are you sure you don't want me to heal you? I, I don't know. Go if, ahead. if you would like to heal me, that's fine. But eh, I'll just fuck up these things. I like the idea of us having this conversation. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> In character, yeah. You want me to heal you, dude? No, I'm good. Just smack that thing. Uh, I'm good, fam. Uh, uh, that misses. 20. Or 12, sorry. Uh, you actually misses? got advantage, so roll again. Hey, hey no. nat 20! Alright, so roll your damage. 48 plus 5. <laughs> so that is... That is a 16 plus 
11 makes 27. Yeah, it's 20. And then the crit table, I believe. Uh, yep. Wait, they're still up? Damn. Yep. Tree! If you'll remember about the rat swarm, uh, they were kind of hard to take down because uh, they get mm-hmm. damage resistance. All right. Because they're like broken into pieces when you're attacking individual ones. All right, three lucky shark. Uh, lucky shot. Target takes one d six extra. Yeah, lucky shark. Uh, target takes one d six extra damage. So roll me d six. So that's a five. Thirty-two damage, minus damage resistance, all with one hit. Uh, I Talia, did thirty-two. You're up. I'm gonna move over here and use my ring of firebolts on them. All right. So you'll have one charge left. So that's a eleven. That's gonna miss. Okay. Um, I'll ask later. All right. Alexander, you're up. Yep, uh, I will use Acid acid Splash again. Dex save, DC 12. Uh, they pass. Okay. Next up is Tinkerbots. Tinkerbots. What are they tinking about? Your thighs. It's hot. Hell yeah. Uh, it's a 14 that's going to miss. I hope they like them thick boy armors. <laughs> so these things are basically completely ineffectual. It's like you, you're having a hard time killing them, but they're so tiny, and they're like using like basically needles for weapons that they can't like do any damage to you at all. I'm thinking about picking up this table and then just squishing all of them. Well, I'd recommend against fucking around with an alchemist's stuff, just randomly. No, that'll add to it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so 16, that's me. maximum with a 16 to hit. Uh, Alright, so 6 damage. Yep. And, and they're perfect. still up. Juliet? Take another stab at it. Maybe 12, I'm guessing that misses. Uh, that does miss. Alright, that's it. Adel, you're up. Dope. I'm gonna pick up this table and squish as many of them I can and get as many of them under the table as I can. Okay, um. Roll me. Odds or evens? If you get a TPK, I'm gonna. <laughs> you're gonna call me a god, is what you're gonna do. Uh, odds or evens, uh, Oliver, call it. Oh, uh, odds. All right. So uh, you pick up the table, and there's some um, some jars and stuff that uh, fall and hit the ground, but it doesn't appear like they're doing anything. And you pick up the table and slam it on top of these things. Give me a, uh, let's see, this would be an improvised attack roll. So let's just use your, uh, it would be your strength without proficiency. Okay. So that would be four. That's my strength modifier. Yep. Uh, and then so. D twenty plus four. So twenty plus four. Yes. Roll a D twenty and add four to it. All right. Here you go. That's an eighteen. All right. So you pick up this table, and uh, stuff uh, comes sliding off of it, and. Uh, the little tinker bots are like trying to move out of the way and you slam the table down on top of them and that's going to do move five damage i'm going to use my move action to- <laughs> uh you can't in your uh turn in their square but i'm uh, on top of talia you're up um come jump on it <laughs> I'm going to go back to looking through Kasich's pockets to see if I can find the coin. Okay, give me uh, an investigation check. So that's an eight. Uh, You're still rifling around, but uh, you're finding odds and ends like uh, um, pieces of like metal rods that you don't know what they do and coins and loops and screws and bolts and 
um, hinges, but you're not finding this coin. Okay. Ali Alejandro. Alexander, you're up. Yep. Uh, if it's not failing now, why stop? Acid splash. DC a 12. Uh, they fell. Okay. D6. Six damage. Acidic. All right. You want to describe how uh, you kill these things? Uh, <laughs> sure. What did he do? Did he shoot him? Um, yeah. So the ball of acid flares overhead, lands on the the chittering mound of fucking tinker bots, and then as it starts to conform to them and dribbles down, they just turn to a bajillion pieces and kind of acidic. So uh, yeah, no. they're made out of copper, and the uh, the acid is just like uh, eroding them, and you can see it just like the metal smoking off of them. Much they like, get uh, covered with a greenish white, foamy, sudsy sort of bubbly solution, and they uh, get blue smoke coming off of them as they fall to pieces and half melted. You look around the room and survey your destruction, and there's bodies, smoking bodies everywhere. There's blood all over the floor. The labs in disarray from mist bolts and and fire and acid. And uh, that's your surroundings currently. Yeah, this is typical for us. We've been here. Okay, so remember how uh, Leto said that uh, he had a bunch of brothers and sisters? Or just brothers, I guess. Yeah, we should like, find Like, basically the alphabet. We should find... <laughs> The coin, and we should find the amulet, and we should get Fo. That's my opinion. That's probably a, a good idea. I say we burn all the bodies. Um, let's... We can do that. Why? Right. By, the, by the fire. <laughs> and we should grab as much pig meat as we can before we leave. Because it smells tasty. Mm. And those are friends, not food. Pig meat. You can believe that. Yeah, they were roasting boar, remember? All right, we search everywhere for the coin, the amulet, and anything else we can actually use from this stupid dwarf's stupid hole in the ground, stupid lab, stupid, stupid, stupid. <laughs> Alexander or Juliet, do you want to give me a detect magic? Are we out of combat? It's got to be Juliet. I don't have detect magic. Yes, we're out of combat. I do have detect magic. You throw that down there. While he does the detect magic, I will ruffle through all the table things. All right. Um, so, Juliet, you detect magic, and this whole room just explodes in like a glow. There's magic all over this place. Um, even mundane things like, you know, a quill or, you know, uh, like a, a little like pillbox um, are just glowing with magic in this place. So, um, there's, uh, appears to be about 21 items in this room that are magical. And then the brightest glow is coming from Kasich himself. All right, let's grab everything, stuff it in our deep sack, and ski daddle to the other rooms while we search for all this crap. Yep, so <laughs> Juliet points out all the things that are magical including at Kazik is. I know Talia, you're searching. If he's got any notes, Juliet's going to try and steal those if they're even useful. Okay, so um, you go over to Kasich and there's two bright things going on him. One is the coin that he used to uh, control uh, the Beast Vault and then at a uh, satchel, or not a satchel, but like a sack at his side um you open it up and inside is the amulet of dominion very nice so give me juliet you're looking for notes give me a, a investigation check Eight five as usual you're seeing some notes and stuff but you don't know exactly what they are but you see like a appears to be a tome that you think is probably important um uh, it's open at the desk where he was working, so um, you think that's probably important if you want to grab it? Sure. 
And uh, is anybody else want to give me an investigation check to see if there's anything else useful in here that's not magical? I'm down. Only an 11 from Elizabeth. 15 from Talia. 18 from your boy. All right, so Oliver and... Or, uh... Adel and Talia, you are going to find uh, two jars of alchemist fire, one jar of acid, three smoke bombs, and 50 gold that was stored away in a small chest. Nice haul. So we'll say you, you gather up that and then all the magical items that are in the room. We can identify them while we're on the road. All right. So I think that's probably a pretty good place to stop. Thanks for listening to another episode of the Dungeons and Debacles podcast. If I could ask a halfling size favor, give us a five-star rating and review on iTunes. It's the best way to support us. New episodes come out every Monday, so make sure to check your podcast app. Do you have an idea to make the podcast better? Tell us about it on Twitter or Facebook. You can also check out our website to see all the maps, lore, and characters at DungeonsAndDebaclesPodcast.com. And now a word from our fantasy sponsor. Bound to be a cult A true hack and slash We do the math We're about to see a cult Adventuring is hard work. As you're entering the lair of a dragon, you can't afford to be spending a second thought about whether your taxes are paid up on your keep or if your monthly payment on your horse has been taken care of. I'm Terrell Silversmith of Silversmith, Silversmith, and Stonegut, certified fantasy accountants, and we can take the grudgery of paying your taxes and bills off your mind. For a modest fee, we can make sure your mundane financial responsibilities are taken care of so you can concentrate on what really matters, saving villages and slaying monsters. We also take care of wills and estates if one of your party members should happen to fall. We can also handle insurance claims for accidental death and dismemberment. Give yourself peace of mind knowing that trade professionals have your back. Silversmith, Silversmith, and Stonegut can handle all your financial needs. Fantasy Accounts, a true hack and slash, we do the math, we're well, Fantasy Accounts. Yeah, we can all hear, can hear you. you. But Oliver seems to be AFK. Rest in peace. Maybe he's feeding the fire again. And walking in the dog. Taking out the tray. Getting something about that bird. They have a bird. Sorry, I had to go uh, talk to the guy who was doing our yard real quick. Oh, I'll check I can't later. remember. It's been too long since I played with Tibbet. And you fuckers oh. killed him. Maybe he wasn't such a... I don't know nothing move. about that. Well, a lot of children killed him, if I remember correctly. No, the kids almost killed him. All right. What'd you think? Did everybody have fun? Yeah, yeah. I sure. get to kill someone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Was that your first character? Uh, the first thing your character's ever killed? Um, In the actual game, yes. I haven't gotten to the special episode where she gets revenge or something. Oh, so we don't it, know is, about it, that. it turned out really, really well. It was a good one. Probably the best one, I think. I don't know if any of them are going to match that. That went really well. Highly recommend you listen to the special episode. It, it'll come up in my pod feed soon enough. <laughs> and she did it in such a graphic way. Yay. <laughs> I think that this actually might end up being two episodes because the actual combat itself took about an hour. Holy shit. Because well, currently, yeah, right now, we're, we're at, uh, what's that? He wouldn't die. Oh, yeah. yeah. They, they had a lot of hit points. And, and all those uh, dog people that you fought were barbarians, so they had damage resistance. <laughs> I was beating their damn asses. It didn't do them much good uh, after they got beat all to hell by the holy fire, and then they kept on trying to run by Adel. I was doing... Mad damn. Yeah. Need shield for the win. I called in a choke position and when the Yeah, you were in the right spot for that shit. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> I see all three of them coming in and I was like 
if they get in here, it's going to be a lot harder. So I was like, I need to act as a barrier or a blockade or something like that. That's what I did. It fucking worked like a charm, too. Yep, that was a good strategy. What did you guys think about the uh, story tie-in with Vito? That was good. I like that. That was the best part. It's very interesting. Hey, what's up, fam? Oh, shit. (laughs) (laughs) Holy shit. (laughs) Gotta kill them all again. (laughs) No, no, Vito's like the only one who survived from the party. Yeah. Except for you two. (laughs) The only good one to survive. So that wraps uh, all that up, but uh, Vito is still out in the world somewhere. We'll murder him later. (laughs) (laughs) Um, When he was, like, poking me in the chest, I was like, I'm thinking about stabbing the shit out of him, because that seems like something my character will do, but I'm not sure if everyone would be amazingly down with that. (laughs) So uh, the thing I wanted to ask about was the Ring of Firebolt. Um, the info I found on it was that it has three charges. Um, when I cast it, it is my spell damage uh, or my spell attack bonus plus six, and then uh, obviously Damn. it does the one ring one d ten because that's what Firebolt does. And um, the my question was also in that information was that uh, it regains one d three expended charges daily at dawn. Nope, none of that is valid with the ring that you've got. The ring that you've got, all it does is is it can cast a firebolt, um, and it has three charges, and once they're uh, used, they're expended forever. The ring becomes useless. I still feel good about using them. All right, let's gather up all of our charge rings, and then Talia can, like, rapid-fire these off, reload, (laughs) rapid-fire. She's got like her whole hands are covered in rings, and she's just like, go, 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 go. Exactly. <laughs> oh, that'd be cool because she'd do like dual wield spells. That'd be really fun. Just like, choo, <laughs> choo. She'd be like, what's her name? Suvi? And, uh, uh, also, I have a question for uh, you, Kevin. What's that? How much damage did that table thing do? Like, to all of them? Uh, just 1d10, but it was bludgeoning damage, so it was halved. Oh my god, huh, Hannah. What? Talia can sneak attack on those spell attacks. Holy shit. Oh my god. For real? <laughs> yeah, it just says an attack roll. So it could be a spell attack, melee, range. God, you could go like half wizard, half um, well, that's fucking rogue, is. and She's then you go rogue. full magic missile. And then at, like, max level, you're just like, goo 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 Magic doesn't level up quite as well as you might think, and it doesn't require an attack roll, so there'd be no sneak attack damage. God damn it. But something like Firebolt would. You bastard. <laughs> I don't mean to ruin your fun, but fuck your fun. Eat my ear. <laughs> now that Mage Armor saved my ass. Mage Armor's did. the best. Decent. Mage armor. I've had mage armor and like uh, shield save my life many a time, especially when you're at those low levels. And uh, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, question about you mage like... armor is it doesn't stack with your armor, right? It's just your base that armor. Is correct. It replaces. So it replaces. Um, it specifically says. Uh, it is D my the target's base uh, AC becomes D thirteen plus its Dex modifier. My Dex modifier is five, so my uh, my it effectively adds three to my AC. So your base right. would be thirteen plus your Dex modifier, which is three, so it'd be a sixteen AC, right? Mage armor also lasts forever. It lasts eight, like, eight like, or eight hours. Um, it's really good for a level one spell. So, I did my math wrong. I was looking at saving throws, which makes my dex modifier actually six, but that's neither here nor there. So your dex modifier um, is three. Your base AC from age arm, mage armor is 13, so that would be a 16 AC. Okay, I know now. I did my math wrong. I apologize. But doesn't your, like, the you're wearing studded leather, right? Which is a base AC of... 12 or 13 anyway, so does that mage armor really help you? Um, yeah, that's the bad part about mage armor. 
I, I guess not. What are you talking about? Mage armor. Because studded leather is a base 13, right? Well, base studded leather no, is 12, so magic. But uh, mage armor gives you a plus one there, which is nice. But once you get magic armor, there's no reason to have mage armor anymore. It's good for those low levels. And it takes. Oh, yeah, definitely. In my opinion, it, it should take you a good minute to get a plus one armor of any kind. Because that's a big damn deal. What, what do you mean, a long time? Well, in my in my game, uh, m magic weapons are kind of going to be very unique, decently rare. That way, when you actually get one, you fucking feel like you you did it. You got you got something really cool and interesting. So, is this your game? N no, I'm just All right, making just, out. Just double check in there. I'm <laughs> goddamn ass. Jesus Christ. Well, the the reason why I'm not being that stingy with stuff is because I want to throw more powerful things at you because it's really boring at low levels, you know, just like week after week after week. It's like, okay, here's a goblin, here's a kobold, here's some other bullshit uninteresting monster. I make very I make very interesting monsters in my opinion. Like I have uh kobolds that ride apes in my game okay. and they fucking they've got flintlock pistols and they're just like running around throwing I used rocks that wrong at anyway cuz it specifically says that isn't wearing armor Yeah you, no, you yeah, should be able to do it with armor Right You're just not going to get any bonus from sure. the armor Oh no actually she's right it says it has to be a willing creature who isn't wearing armor Wow okay Killing? So you can't use it anyway. Yeah. It does last eight hours, but yeah, you're right. It'd be good if you're not sure if you're going to get ambushed, so... Is that a concentration spell? I don't think so. Uh, no, it's just straight eight hours. Because concentrating for eight hours sounds terrible. <laughs> <laughs> well, if I got hit, great. <laughs> The music you heard on this episode was Unholy Night, Failing Defense, Crossing the Chasm, and Metaphysics by Kevin McLeod at Incompetech.com. Licensed under Creative Commons by Attribution 3.0 License. CreativeCommons.org slash licenses slash buy slash 3.0.